as you can see, I have my radio apart. I've seen a bunch of videos on the internet on how to build an FM transmitter out of an old radio, but none of them really explain exactly what you have to do. I haven't got this to work yet, but I'm going to show you how far I've got. Right here you have your tuning capacitor. And next to the tuning capacitor, from what I understand, you're supposed to cut these coils. And I cut these coils and I ran my audio cables here. They're disconnected now. The cables are disconnected now, but I wrapped them all around these coils and all I could get was basically static and a bunch of annoying noise. I've been working on this thing now for about four and a half hours and it's a real pain in the ass. You know, I cut the coils so basically my radio is destroyed. And uh, it's about the 10 for 15 radio that I've killed trying to make it transmit. I don't know what the secret method to get this thing to work is. I've been trying to figure it out myself for a long time and I can't seem to get it. But I figured I would at least show you how I myself have done it in my understanding. Let me show you again. From what I've seen on the internet, you are supposed to hook your two sound wires, which come from a radio or headphones, whatever you got, to these two coils here. And then you hook your antenna to one of these capacitors here. Sorry I can't point, the camera's in my hand, but that's what I understand. Now I'm going to try and get this to work, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, let me just, let me show you, hang on. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Alright, we have our receiver turned on. Okay, now we have our other radio turned on. Now this right here is what I've been able to do so far. I'm able to get static, and I'm able to get a carrier tone out of this radio here. If I do this, as you see, the sound goes away. However, that's about as far as I've got. Now, as you see, I've got sound. But that's not coming out of the receiver. That's coming out of this radio. It's reamplifying. Now I'm going to put this wire here and try and find the station. As you see, there's nothing coming out of this. One thing that I found out that I get static on this radio here is if I touch the wires on these little capacitors here I haven't got an actual signal yet but what I have got is a bunch of static if you're one of the people out there who've been trying to build one of these transmitters send me a message if you got any kind of clue if I'm doing something wrong here because I, I don't understand this stuff myself yet I'm just trying to get a basic understanding myself here because as you see I haven't got it however trying to touch 
And as you see, I get like a dead carrier coming out of this radio. But the receiving radio, I'm not getting anything. Now if I touch these, it's really weird. Then the radio actually starts receiving another type of frequency. It's not AM or FM. I touch this. Now these coils. I'm sorry the quality of the video sucks. I'm doing my best here, but this isn't easy. Now I'm going to try and touch these coils. I'm not getting much luck. Alright, I have the flashlight on the microchips now. Hopefully you'll be able to see it a little better. That's not helping. Touching all these leads videos I've seen were done with an alarm clock. This is an old cassette player boombox that I'm working with here. Let me try touching this capacitor over here. How about the yellow one here? Okay. I got some sound. But that's not coming from the receiver, it's coming from this. Now I have tried just about everything I could think of here. I had the wires on every end of the tuning capacitor. I've had the wires... Let me turn on the flashlight. I've had the wires on every one of these coil leads. And I've also touched the wires on every one of these capacitors. Even these capacitors here, and I still have not got it to transmit. I know this radio at one time worked. It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't receive anyway. But it does reamplify the tone that I put in there. So I get it to reamplify. Over here is the amplifier circuit. So I was thinking maybe if I was to wire something on this end. My idea was if I could wire something on this end, maybe the amplifier would amplify it. And then I hook an antenna to the tuna capacitor or one of these other variable capacitors here. I don't know what any of these capacitors do. I haven't adjusted them. But it's an idea, and I'm going to see if it works. not coming out of the receiver. That is this radio. No, this radio that I'm working on is re-amplifying the signal I'm putting in, but it's not transmitting like I want it to. I'll get it. I just got to screw around with it for a while. That's the power transformer. I don't want to touch that. One thing you want to make sure of is you don't want to touch the power transformer. Power transformers look like this. Usually it's right by the cord. Whatever you do, don't touch those leads there. And whatever you do, don't put any metal near this. Okay? If you put metal around there, you're asking to die. I put the wires on this end of the circuit. I got the sound to reamplify through the speakers here, but the sound did not come out of this radio. Now I got my dial tuned all the way to the, uh, to the right here, 
around 108, and I have this one tuned on the same frequency. Usually there's no stations that high, so usually you got an open range. Anyway, grab my wires here. By the way, one way you can get sound is if you use another radio and you cut a headphone jack like I did. In order to get sound, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to have a plug. Headphone jack will work just fine. That's what I used. Now, you want to make sure it's a decent pair of headphones with copper wire. You don't want none of them little earbud wires with the little fiber optic stuff. It's junk. And usually I myself have never been able to get them to work. So you want a decent headphone jack with copper wire. This wire you're looking at is off of an old television set. I cut the plug off. Right here. And I attached the two ends of my headphone jack to the electrical wire of an old... One thing you always want to do before you cut the wire is make sure that this jack works. Because a lot of times headphones, these wires are cheap and they break. So as long as both speakers work, you can use this jack. All you got to do to get the bare end of the copper here is take a lighter or some kind of flame and burn the casing. I'll show you. Hang on. take a lighter and you burn the casing. Don't worry, you ain't going to burn your house down or nothing, just wire casing. Let that burn off. After you burn the casing, this is what you got. Decent copper wire to work with. Now, I don't really know what else to do with this, so I'm going to put this aside for a while and upload this video to the internet. If you have any idea how to do this, send me a message so I can figure it out. And uh, if you try it on your own, good luck. That's all I can say. Whatever you do, don't touch this thing. I've been shocked by these power transformers before. You won't get shocked messing with the receiver or the amplifier unless you have a very powerful radio. But when you get shocked by one of these transformers, it burns like hell and you cannot let go. So stay away from this thing. Peace.